cyberchondriac, stress and worry, somatoform disorder, scare people, excessive, irrational fear. Some of the negative impacts of uh, internet self-diagnosis is that patients will take minor illnesses or minor symptoms that they may be having and they relay them to the big diagnosis. They take maybe a cold or runny nose and they say all of a sudden that I have the flu. And when they actually diagnose themselves with symptoms like the flu or if they say they have a pain in their leg and all of a sudden I bet I have bone cancer, that makes them afraid. If I'm right with what I think I have, I don't want to hear about it because it's you know, if you, if you start reading deeper into these different type of medical conditions, it's not always just the common cold. If they are afraid and they find out this information and they're afraid of what they found out, it may scare them from coming to the doctor and that's actually taking care of something minor, while it is minor. If you leave them undone, they sometimes become major things and that can be a big problem. Probably is really harmful for some people to be able to look up any symptom they might be having and then assume it's something absolutely horrible and life-threatening. The internet can contribute to a lot of worry in patients and undue worry at that. Diseases don't follow the textbook and so sometimes people will read things and attend to ascribe every single symptom that's listed to themselves. I have A, B, and C, thusly I must have this. And so I think it does cause a lot of undue stress and worry. Once you start digging, you, there's just so much information out there that people kind of get overloaded and they they tend to feel like everything applies to them. They used to call that uh, the medical student disease. You know, they uh, hy hypochondriac, <laughs> you know. Uh, if you study on it for a long period of time, you can always find that you have some of anything and everything. And so if you dwell on it, of course you'll find something. First and foremost with cyberchondriac, that falls into the category of psychological disorders known as somatoform disorders. Somatoform disorders are basically disorders where a person um, may um, believe they have certain illnesses psychologically, but they really don't have the ailment physically. My mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I think it was the following summer, I was at the gym, and I felt some pain in my chest. I'm like, oh, great. I noticed there was some type of little bump, and I'm like, that's it. You know, I thought that it's in the family. Um, I started reading about breast cancer in men, which was possible, um, and I was pretty certain that I had it, and I was, you know, afraid to talk to my parents about it, obviously, and worried to go to the doctor, and I finally did go to the doctor, and he took a look and examined, he's like, eh, it's probably ingrown hair, a little cyst, it'll be gone, I give it a, you know, two, three weeks. The internet is occasionally useful but there's no question that it can scare people because if they have, uh, for instance, even something as simple as a pimple, they go on the internet and they see all of these various diseases that it might be instead of understanding that it's just a pimple. I would believe that a lot of people probably have cyberchondria, so they're gonna find symptoms that appeal to their illness that'll actually just really be supporting their own mental illness rather than their physical illness. Sometimes we can read something or we can see something that we may not necessarily even be experiencing, but because we've read it, because we've seen it, we begin to mimic it, and it can be done actually unconsciously. It's interesting to, to look at if people are going to these websites and reading about all these diseases, if that's increasing their stress or if it's a symptom of their stress. Not only are you causing stress on yourself, you're causing stress on your family and probably the doctor who's like, no, you don't have this. With anxiety, we heavily relate that to fear. And that's just a normal uh, level of fear. We're talking about excessive, irrational fear. And that can actually, you know, play a huge critical role in regards to why would a person self-diagnose versus go and seek professional help. I was having some itching right in my hairline. And I noticed that there was like, almost looked like acne or something. But it didn't really feel like acne. It was, you know, it was very itchy and started to get painful. And then I noticed that it was up at my forehead. And right away I figured, I'm like, I'm suffering from some sort of uh, bug bite poison. And I go on the internet and started to look up like, you know, brown recluse spider bites and the um, symptoms from that. And, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out what home remedies I could take to rid myself of this beastly poison. I found out I had shingles, which was weird, but, uh, you know, something again where I probably shouldn't have sat and looked it up and uh, went right away, which is interesting because 
you know, noticing with shingles, it's like a time sensitive thing getting to the doctor in order to get medicated. So it probably would have been better to just go to the doctor right off the bat.